literally more drama than a soap opera, it seems, over the last week. Every day you're waiting for the next instalment. What's going to happen? Who's going to speak today? Well, there is no doubt about it. The All Blacks, they are under pressure at the moment. James Lowe! There's too much momentum behind him and the Irish strike early. Famous victory again. Brilliant Ireland. And were we found out for the first time this season? No one has done this to us. And should we take a leaf out of their book? Because we got no go for We got no momentum in our attack. We've been dominated for 40 minutes. We've had limited opportunity. It's been an impressive performance from France. Once again, we've made errors, we've made mistakes. Stan has been a big tour. But to lose back-to-back -back test matches at the end of this tour against Ireland and France, it has to be concerned. And a famous Irish victory their first against the All Blacks in New Zealand. So it'll be a big one next week. They're going to have to really step up. Yeah! And that is that. Ireland win the series. You know, knocking on the balls that we, we wouldn't normally. And I think that just shows that maybe we just haven't got that combination that we needed. It just, you know, to me, it was, it was hard to see, but it just was just out for us tonight. It was a big stage and, and we fell short. The coaches are going to have to look in the mirror, and that's what All Blacks do. There are no excuses around us. We are not good enough at the moment. We need to cop that, but we also need a strategic plan moving forward. Well, the All Blacks have lost four out of the last five tests, and you heard Sir John Kerwin say just not good enough at the moment. Well, in the next couple of weeks, the Rugby Championship starts on Sunday, of course. Do you get a bigger challenge in rugby than going to South Africa playing back-to-back -back tests at altitude, Jeff? Look, the, the funny thing about this, and I've listened to some interviews coming out of the team, they're talking about getting better and improving. My concern is that's not what people are interested in right now. They want to see them win. W the, 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 this yeah. is, the pressure is on to win. The pressure is on for their captain, for their coach, for their team, for their group, for the organisation to go out and be successful. And that's, that's an unfortunate position to be in, but that's the reality when you play for the All Blacks. And there's two test matches right now where normally you can look to the future. At this time of the, the preparation for Rugby World Cup, we're focusing on what's going to happen next, who's building towards that nicely. The challenge now is which group of players does this coaching staff, with a new coach coming in, put together, assemble, to play at altitude two weeks in a row when everything is on the line? Not just, and, and even the rugby championship, which we are the holders right now, will need to win at least one of those test matches to come out on top. So significantly for me, all of these things you talk about being a good thing, I think this is one of the hardest challenges the All Blacks have had to have in a long, long time. How do you think the All Blacks stack up to the Springboks? If you look at the squads as a whole, if you look at the X Factor, if you look at the leadership group, if you look at set piece and the forwards, where will the challenges come? Oh, I don't talk about set piece because <laughs> that there makes me nervous. I mean, you, you got, only have to look back at what the Springboks did in that first test and how they came back. Well, what do they use? They're, they're driving walls, their line outs. If I look at our players, and I mentioned it last week, you know, I've got every confidence in the X Factor players we've got. There's no doubt in my mind we have got the players to be, you know, world champions. It's how they're going to go about playing. You know, what do they change now? What have they gone away and changed in this last couple of weeks to really, um, you know, simplify their, their game plan and get on that same page? Because we've seen that against the Irish. They looked all over the place. They looked, un they looked a little bit confused. Has now Ian Foster, you know, in these last couple of weeks said, OK, this is how we're going to play and got the backing from the... Yeah, there's no doubt he's got backing now as the coach, but has he got the backing of the game plan and the style they want to play in South Africa? Because this is a massive, massive challenge. You're not, you're not sort of warming into things. They've got to get that result because that result and that first one, if they don't win that first one, for me, really... That's going to be a very long tour. That second one's going to be a hard one to pick up. What is our best team then to beat the Springboks? What sort of changes will we see? These fresh faces that were brought in, the Shannon Frizzells, the Fletcher Newells, will we see these guys play? I think the first one, I think Frizzell probably brings brings in something, whether it's off the bench or, or not. You know, who, who does he go there in terms of a, a line-out option? Because the line-out's going to be the killer. That, that's going to be a place they have to really, instead of trying to absorb it, they have to really try and attack their set piece. And how do they do that? Well, perhaps sending someone like, like a Frizzell, and he's, he's brought on a little bit of physicality as well during the, you know Super Rugby and what he's sort of done to try and match up with these guys, or not actually, you know, impose himself in, into the game like that. The biggest for me would be the back line. You know, mm. what does the back line shape up to be like? Because if you look at the, the spring box, there is a lot of caps on that other side, plenty of experience and plenty of spark too. So, so Mills, the interesting thing about this is the fact that the moment they let John Plumtree out of the environment, let him go, that was a selector that's gone. My understanding is that Ian Foster, with advice and support from Joe Smith, are the two that are actually picking this side 
to play against South Africa. It was always going to be difficult to bring James, uh, Jason Ryan into this environment and go, look, and can you pick the team as well? That'll be handy, yeah. you know? Yeah. He's do getting to know. Yeah. Do it all. You're yeah. getting to, he's getting to know the players. Yeah. He would have been given his brief. I think this is going to be Ian Foster's team, the one that's going to perform and get him and help him get his survival, how things go going forward. And he's got to decide, which are the guys for me now? I know it's a hard one. But he look at look at this and go, the guys that he's going to trust in the next 15 months, if he's there as the all-black coach, to deliver at a rugby World Cup. The blindside flaker thing for me is fascinating. Yeah. Scott Barrett was the first oh, choice. Yes. Yeah. Then he picked up an injury, so he didn't play the third test. Akira Iwani showed some signs in the third test against Ireland, but Shannon Frizzell is the line-out option, carries the ball hard. That makeup of our forward pack, and particularly at lock, because then you'd have to trust Tupo Vai right, yeah. with Sam Whitelock against the Springboks. Is that the future? Do you go down that path? What impact does Adi Savia have? Do you then have Dalton Populetti coming off the bench? All of those things. And I haven't even got to the back line. I, know, I mean, yeah. this is the thing. And, and if you're going to go down as the head coach of this All Black team, I like the fact it's his side. I'm going to pick the 23 guys to determine my future. And he, he has to, really. You talk about, you know, look, look what he has to put up with. Do I pick for the future or do I, am, I, am I picking for survival? And I think he's got to pick for survival. So what does that look like? Do you, do you, do you look at the likes of Frizzell and, 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 and come and go, wow, man? I disagree. I disagree. You know what he has to do? He has to be courageous and go, how am I going to beat the Springboks? With speed and skill and mobility. Yep, that means that I'm running a risk up front. The fact that they may have put us under pressure at scrum time. Yeah. They might put us under pressure with a line-out drive. But what we are going to do is we're going to score points. We're going to put attacking weapons on the field. Will Jordan at fullback. I want to see that. What happens at first five? Does he go, you know what? I still think he's going to go with Bowden Barrett. But I think the brief for the guys might be slightly different. Yeah. I put Rico Yuan into the wing. Trouble is, what do you do at centre? Jack Goodhue, no good. You know, he's, he's, he's injured. He's carrying injuries at the Trans moment. Roger Toy well, I mean, here's the thing. If you... If I was a, I'm a fan as much as I am a, 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 an analyst of the game now. I'm looking and going, you know what? I can't see what I saw. I can't see what I uh, saw against Ireland. So just to confirm, you're putting Shannon Frizzell into the starting side. Maybe on the bench, you're putting Rico back out to the wing and starting Will Jordan. And you're actually going to be on the ground for us in South Africa. We've got a team there next Sunday. Can't wait. I, ca I can't wait for it. I mean, it's been four years, I think, yeah. since we've been to South oh, Africa. Built, let's go. Time. And we know the two test matches last year in Australia were remarkable. You were yeah, there. I mean, yeah. unbelievable test matches. That's what we should expect. Well, there has been so much talk all week about the backroom. Not so much about these tests and the players. It all came to a head when Sir Steve Hansen went on the radio on Today FM and spoke to Toba O'Brien. There's been a lot of reviews done recently, you know, Glenn Moore and, and, uh, and Ian Foster on their coaching abilities. And, you know, when was New Zealand Rugby did a, a self-review of itself? Like, we still don't know what happened with Glenn. We've got Glenn coming out saying that there's a whole lot of lies uh, spoken. Um, they've come out and, and uh, aired all their dirty washing in the front part of the uh, property, rather out the back. So, you know, the relationship between the board and the exec uh, with the players at the moment is probably the worst it's ever been. Why, why the New Zealand Rugby Union let Steve Chu go or forced Steve Chu to go um, at the same time as I finished in 19. So they had two relatively inexperienced people running the, the ship. I can't fathom. Mm. And again, that's a board decision. Mark Robinson's going to be a good CEO. However, it, like everyone into Sam Kane about his captaincy, I remember in 07, Richie McCall was the worst captain we've ever had, <laughs> according right. to the media and the public. That's right. Well, he went on to become the greatest captain we've had, and he's the only rugby player to ever lift the World Cup up twice. 